Hello, if I lost everything in my makeup collection, these are the products that I would repurchase first. Okay, I tried to choose these based somewhat on price point because realistically I would want to spend less if I had to remake up a whole makeup collection, but I also wanted to go with like my genuine favorites. So this video was inspired by my friend Rudy Berry. If you don't follow Rudy, you absolutely should. She's the cutest, sweetest, nicest person ever. I am obsessed with Rudy. So if you don't follow her, you need to. She just did this and I thought it was fun. I've done like similar videos to this in the past, but I like this format of like, what would I buy first? And I'm excited to say that this portion of today's video is in partnership with Ana Luisa. You guys know I've been working with them for a while now. We've had um, like a partnership this whole past year. And today, I'm gonna show you what I'm wearing. Okay, first of all, you guys are gonna be really excited about this because one of the most common comments that I would get for a while there was, I wear silver jewelry, but Ana Luisa has been getting so many silver pieces, including the earrings I'm wearing now. So this is the silver version of my favorite earrings that you guys see me wearing like every single day. These are the Tia Medium Gold Hoops. Now they have a silver version. So these are the Tia Medium Silver. I went for a slightly more like cool tone vibe today. So we've got on the silver earrings. I also picked out the mini version of these. I'm normally such a gold person, but lately I've been getting more into silver. So I love that Ana Luisa has had more silver pieces on their website. These are a little bit more subtle. These make me wish that I still had my second holes pierced because I think it would be cute to wear a stack with the larger silver and then smaller silver. If you have two ear piercings, try that. I think that would be really cute. And these hoops I wore the other day when I had my hair up with um, a little like bow in my hair and you guys really liked these. I was getting a lot of questions on these tortoise earrings. These are the Aster Dark Tortoise. I think these are so cute. So I wear a lot of hoops. I thought these new ones were really fun. But if this does happen to be the first time you've heard me talk about Ana Luisa, they are a sustainable jewelry company based here in New York City. They're actually based in Brooklyn. I am obsessed with their pieces. I talked in another video recently about how I'm currently single and I'm saying I'm dating myself. I've been taking myself out on dates, buying myself flowers, whatever it might be. So if you are also dating yourself right now, I feel like jewelry is a nice Valentine's Day gift you can gift yourself. I feel like Valentine's Day doesn't have to be a negative holiday. For me, it's one of my favorites, but I know some people kind of dread Valentine's Day if you're single. I feel like it's such a fun day to love yourself, love your friends, love your family. It's one of my favorites. So I was really excited to partner with Anna Louisa today. Thank you for continuing to partner with me on this channel and let's jump into what I would repurchase first. So this scenario was actually kind of funny to me because one of my best friends moved last year and when she was moving, she got rid of all of her makeup and then repurchased everything for the first time. And I remember she asked me, she's like, I just wanna buy like one thing per category because a lot of her old stuff was like expired and whatnot. And she's like, what would you buy? I know that's a super specific example, but like if you happen to be going through that right now, this is what I would buy. So first of all, I wouldn't even bother with a primer. If I lost all my makeup and I had to buy something from scratch, for me, I have primers I love, don't get me wrong, that Danessa Myricks one is on like constant rotation for me, but primer's not a must. Foundation is a must. And if I'm gonna buy one foundation, you guys might be surprised. I would buy Fenty Ease Drop. I wouldn't buy it in this shade. I have shade five, which is too dark for me. I would buy it in shade three, which would probably be a better match. But this is my favorite. Whenever I have a special occasion, if I need to look nice, I need my skin to look flawless, there's no second thought. Like this is what I reach for. I'm not even kidding you. People will ask me like, what are your base products? And it's normally this with Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin. Like that's the combo. That's my dream combo. But this foundation, I like how serum-y it is. I like that it's pretty thin. I like that you can build it up a little bit. If I was gonna purchase a second one, I would buy Koki HD Foundation. That's a great drugstore option. The formulas aren't the same at all, but I like that one as a more medium buildable coverage option, whereas this is more light to medium. If I was gonna buy a second one, I would buy the Koki, but if I was like, just get one, this is what I would buy. Okay, second, you need a concealer. The concealer I would repurchase, I am out of right now, but I kind of need to repurchase it anyways. It is the Catrice True Skin Concealer. It's the best concealer, you guys. I like it more than all my high-end options. I like it more than all my drugstore options. The creasing is minimal. It's incredibly smoothing. It has high coverage, high pigment, but it doesn't look heavy. You, you can't beat that one. Like that one is my favorite. I miss it. I have other concealers I've been trying to use up for a while now, and yet, I'm so tempted to repurchase the Catrice one because I miss having it in my collection, even though I have plenty of others. Okay, before we get into powder, 
let's talk cream products. I really debated here. I'm like, if I was purchasing everything new, would I be buying a cream everything? Would I need a cream bronzer, cream blush, cream highlight? I don't think so. So I only picked one. I picked a cream bronzer and I picked this $8 one from the drugstore. This is the Makeup Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. It's fantastic. I talk about it a lot, so I probably don't need to spend much time on it, but it is my favorite cream bronzer. I like this better than all my high-end cream bronzers. I reach for this so consistently. It is about as blendable as it gets, but it's not too blendable where you feel like it's moving around too much because some cream bronzers can be too emollient and then they just won't really stay where you're putting them. This is the perfect middle point, but that's the only cream product I picked. I was like, I probably wouldn't need a cream blush Definitely wouldn't need a cream highlighter. I'm going through a phase right now where I'm, I'm getting back to my powders. For a while there, I was very heavily on the cream train. That, this thing, that was a really weird expression. But now I, I'm, I'm loving my powder products again. So I didn't feel like I needed to add too many cream or liquid-based products just yet. You know, maybe eventually I'd buy more. But if I'm just buying like the bare bones of a collection, I'm just going to buy that cream bronzer. But... For a powder, I'm going with this. This one I'm almost out of. It is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh. I mean, look at, I have like basically none of this left. Powder was very hard because I have so many favorites. I'm like, do I take the Kosas powder? Do I take the LYS powder? But my thought process was, I'm buying a lot of makeup at once. I'm repurchasing everything. So I want to save money where I can. And this is such a good drugstore powder. I think it competes fantastically with high-end powders does, is fantastically a word. This is a fantastic drugstore powder, just powder in general. It's one of my favorites. It's smoothing, it has a little bit of coverage to it. It's not heavy. I have no complaints. Now, part of the reason I felt like I really wanted to opt for a drugstore powder is because I went high-end for blush, bronzer, highlight. There are blush, bronzers, and highlights at the drugstore that I do like, and, and I recommend them all the time. I talk about drugstore makeup constantly, but if I'm like, these are the products I need back immediately, like realistically, they happen to be high end. So starting with powder bronzer, it's this one. It is the Fenty powder bronzer. This is their sun stalker bronzer. I have mine in the lightest shade, which is called in the sun. First of all, this is one of the lightest powder bronzers that I've found out there. So if you're really fair like myself, you will probably love this. The formula, I know the word buttery gets overused on the internet a lot, but I think it's so applicable to this product in particular. And the funniest part to me, this is my newest powder bronzer, but if you were to put all of my powder bronzers next to each other, you might guess that this is one of the older ones based on how much wear it has. Like it looks dirty, it has a huge dip in it. I use this constantly. I'm wearing it today. I can't stop using this. It is the best. If I didn't have this, if this knock on wood. If this fell down and broke, immediately I would go into my Ulta app and repurchase it. This is a fun video because I feel like I'm talking about the best of the best, but for blushes, if you know me, you know I couldn't pick just one. And you know the two that I picked. It's Persona Bubble and Bare Minerals Blonzer. Okay, so first we'll talk about Bubble. This was my first choice. This I knew immediately was staying because I, I live and breathe for this blush, you guys. You know I do. That's so dramatic, but I... It's my favorite. I wear it constantly. In the pan, it's so intimidating, but on the cheeks, it shears out a lot. It's, it's the best blush. I, it looks good on everyone. I've seen it work for so many different people. It's, it's amazing. But my other favorite, I was like, I can't just take a hot pink blush, you know? I'm like, girl, are you going to want to wear hot pink blush every day? Maybe. Maybe. I, I could get down with that. But I figured I should opt for a neutral-ish option also. So... Bare Minerals Blonzer. This is the product that is supposed to be a combo of a blush and a bronzer. Strong disagree on that. This is very much just a blush, but it is a more neutral tone. It almost is the color that your cheeks might become if you had the beginning of a sunburn. You know what I mean? Because of that, it just looks so natural on the skin. And if that's what you're going for, like it's so beautiful and radiant. For highlight, you guys, if I'm being honest, highlight, I could throw out with primer. If I was buying everything new for the first time, I wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, which highlight am I gonna buy? At least that's how I feel current day, winter 2023, you know? Maybe, 
maybe by summer, maybe by next year, I'll be more on the highlighter train. But right now I'm like, I wouldn't need a highlight, but I figured you guys would want to see one. So I picked one. I'm like, if I was going to pick one, which one would it be? And it's this one from Sigma, specifically the shade Twilight. This is the most beautiful, like pinky rosy undertone highlight that I think blends seamlessly into your blush. I really like a highlight that has kind of a pink undertone to it because it it's hard to tell like where does the blush stop where does the highlighter start i'm more into that look these days as opposed to the look that i loved five years ago which was more of like your golden or your champagne highlight do you remember like that's when you could see the very defined blush placement and the very defined highlighter placement personally i don't like that as much anymore i prefer when they really like fade into one, one another seamlessly so that's why I like highlights that lean pink. And this color is the best one I've found. Like, I, I should wear this today. Today I'm wearing um, Persona Cosmetics Zuma. No, not Zuma. Laguna. The, the like almost white color. For, oh, I was going to do an eyeshadow. Let's hold on on eyeshadow. Let's hold on. I feel like I might surprise you on eyeshadow. But first, before we get there, let's talk about brows. For brows, I would not go overboard. You know? Typically in my brow routine, it probably is too many steps. I'm like a brow gel here, a brow uh, marker here, a brow pencil there. Like I'm, I'm using a lot of things at once, but I don't think you need a lot of things at once. I feel like one brow product can usually get it done and the others are just kind of extra. So if I'm just choosing one, I think it would be this one. This has been my most reached for recently. This is from the Lip Bar, and it's called the Exact Arch Micro Brow Pencil. So it is very similar to most micro brow pencils on the market. Elf makes a great one. NYX makes a great one. Like this is another good drugstore option, but this one in particular, I feel like I've been reaching for a lot because it has really good staying power. I feel like I don't have to worry about it fading too much or moving around. Also, it has like just enough of a waxy texture that it almost holds your brows in place a little bit. I mean, a brow pencil is not gonna do a ton, but I always appreciate when a brow pencil is a slightly more waxy consistency because I feel like it's gonna do a little bit of the work there, you know? And this one, I think the tip is the right size. The only downside I have about this, and it might just be mine, but when I roll it back down, sometimes it doesn't wanna roll back down and I have to like push it back in there but mine might just be broken, but this has been my most used recently. Like I said, it's what's in my brows right now. Eyeshadow primer, again, if I'm just building a collection from start, I probably would skip eyeshadow primer and just use the concealer. That being said, I don't know. These days I'm very much an eyeshadow primer person, so maybe if I'm gonna use one, I'm gonna buy one. I would probably go with the Ulta Beauty Collection matte brow, what am I saying? What am I saying? Matte, why did I, why was I about to say brow again? Primer, eyeshadow primer. But again, I don't know if that's like a totally necessary category. Maybe I could skip it, but if I was going to buy one, that's what I would buy. Mascara. I would buy this if I could find it, but it's like not available anywhere. It's sold out. I think it's being discontinued, but this is my favorite mascara. Well, my favorite mascara changes by the week, but this is always in my top three rotations and this is the one I would want back immediately, you know? So this is the CoverGirl Flourish Lash Blast Mascara. So it's, it's in the Lash Blast line, but specifically it's the Flourish version. And specifically, it is the brown shade. It is the most perfect medium brown. It's not too intense. Personally, I really enjoy a brown mascara because I find it to be a little bit less harsh, especially because I am pretty fair. So this is the one I would want back. It's my favorite brown, but hopefully it's not being discontinued. Okay, I know you're waiting for eyeshadow and I know you might think, okay, you're only gonna buy one eyeshadow palette. You would probably opt for a big one, maybe a larger palette like Natasha Denona Glam, you know, with a ton of shades in it. I thought that too. I thought about a lot of them, but I'm like, you know what? This whole, this whole um, hypothetical scenario would be very sad. I would be so sad to lose all my makeup because I feel like I have a personal attachment to a lot of it. A lot of my products I have like memories associated with and whatnot and palettes in particular, I would be so sad to lose all my palettes. But with that in mind, a lot of times these days my eyeshadow routine has been very simplified 
in 2023. I'm not usually doing anything too intricate for eyeshadow, so I'm not always needing like a big range of colors, a lot of different depths. Something simple I would be happy with. Like for me, the fun of makeup these days is very much in like base and blush and like lip combos. Like that's the part of my routine I'm enjoying the most. Eyeshadow doesn't get me as excited in 2023 as it did in 2017, you know? So if I'm just gonna pick one, maybe this is a surprise, maybe it's not. It would be Natasha Denona Mini Biba. This palette never lets me down. It's pretty simple. You've got four matte shades, one shimmer shade. Technically, one of the mattes is like a cream to powder matte, but they're all mattes. And it's, it's neutral, but it has this very pretty, almost like peachy pink undertone to it. I think it's incredibly flattering. And because I didn't pick out an eyeliner here, I like that this has a deeper brown that I could use as an eyeliner. That's what I have as my eyeliner today. The palette I'm wearing right now is actually Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, but I did reach into this shade to do a bit of a subtle shadow wing look. So this one, you guys, this has been on rotation for me so much lately. In my everyday makeup drawer, which is right over here, this has been in the drawer for quite a while now. And when I'm getting ready, like so often I think you should pick out a different palette. You've been using this a lot. And then I still go into this. Like almost every look I've done recently, not necessarily on camera, but like at least in my personal life, this is what I'm wearing. I love it. It's, it's a perfect palette. Just to have a little bit of fun. Maybe if I wanted to splurge and buy a second eyeshadow related product, I would buy Urban Decay Space Cowboy. This has been my favorite for years. So much so that this is the old packaging. It's like round and bulky. Now it comes in like a square package with a, with a circle pan in it still. But this product, you guys, I feel so ahead of the trend because this has gone viral on the internet in the last year, but I have been raving about this for years. Like this has been my go-to forever. And now that so many people are falling in love with Space Cowboy, like it gets me excited. I'm like, yes, I agree. It's such a good eyeshadow topper. It is like hyper glittery. If you like a super sparkly effect, this is perfect for that, but it doesn't really have a base to it. So you could put it over any color and the color will still be maintained beneath, but you'll have the sparkle over top. So, I mean, in this case, that doesn't do me any good because I didn't pick a colorful eyeshadow palette, but if you have a colorful palette, like you're wearing purple on your eyes, but you want some sparkle, this is cool because you can add the sparkle over top. The purple's still there, but now you've got glitter. Whew, okay, for lips. Lips are hard because this one is really hard to break down. It's like, realistically, like I have a lot of lip products. So I've got lip liners, I've got lip glosses, I've got lip stains, I've got lip oils, liquid lipsticks, bullet lipsticks, lip, is that everything? Am I missing something? I don't know. There are so many categories, but I was like, I, I can't pick one from every category. You know, we've got to be, we've got to narrow it down. So I would get two lip liners because these are only $4 a piece and I feel like a lip liner can transform a lip color. I, this is my hot take. I think having a versatile lip liner collection is more valuable than having a versatile lipstick collection. Like you can change things so much with the lip liner. You really only need a few lipsticks. And then like the lip liners, I feel like do most of the heavy lifting, according to me, according to me. I feel like a lip liner can really alter the color. So. These are my two most worn shades, you can tell, because they're, they're getting down there. They have been sharpened quite a bit. We've got NYX Nude Truffle, and then we've got NYX Peekaboo Neutral. Now, Peekaboo Neutral is identical to Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk Eyeliner, so if you were wanting that one, try this, it's $4. But these two shades, I feel like could take you so many different directions. Nude Truffle is gonna make things more neutral. Peekaboo Neutral, it has neutral in the name, but it's very pink leaning. So I feel like this would cover a lot of ground for like just two lip liners. And then I went with a liquid lipstick. This one is also from NYX, also very affordable. This is, this is so old. You remember when the NYX soft matte lip creams were everything? I still love this formula. This is the shade London. It's a nude color, but if you pair it with Peekaboo, Peekaboo Neutral, you can make it more pink. Or if you pair it with Nude Truffle, you can make it more neutral. 
And then I had to do a lip oil and the Milani Fruit Fetish. These are some of my favorites. I specifically love the shade Strawberry Melon. This one is really pink, so I thought this would be a fun gloss. Maybe I would want like a third lip product that's a clear gloss, maybe. And maybe I'd go like the NYX This Is Juice gloss. But I actually do think with these three alone, there are so many more combinations than you would even think. Did I say three? <laughs> Did I say three? These four. There's so many combinations. Okay, I would skip setting spray. I would skip a lot of categories. Like if I was just building a collection from scratch, this is what I would start with. So I hope you guys found this one interesting. I will leave Rudy's down below. Definitely watch her version of this video. And thank you so much to Anna Luisa for partnering with me today. I will have a link down below if you wanna shop any jewelry for Valentine's Day. And I will go ahead and see you guys in my next one. Bye.